what would happen if you took the 12 finest race drivers in the world? All of the greatest them. racing drivers in the world are brought together. The premise, of course, is to determine who would be the world's greatest race driver. He's spinning down the front stretch, back stretch, to bring it to top eight. Dale Earnhardt wins it. Wow, the classic intimidator move. Just a few hundred feet from the finish line. Well, it's finally been done in an international race of champions. The longest and fastest stock car racetrack, Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, is the site today of race number two of the True Value International Race of Champions 24th season. Dale Earnhardt looks for his fourth victory here at this track in the IROC series. He also swept both NASCAR Winston Cup races here in 1999. Now, these points going into this event reflect the finishing positions at Daytona. Tony Stewart finished second in that race. Jeff Burton is tied with Stewart for second in the points because Burton got more bonus points for leading the second highest number of laps. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins. Welcome to Talladega for the 94th IROC race overall and the 11th held here at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt has been the story recently. He's won four of the last five IROC races, including the one here last year. But Dr. Jerry Punch, there are 11 other drivers in the field today, including three from the open wheel ranks. Bob Talladega Super Speedway may be known as the world's fastest stock car facility, but it traditionally has been very kind to open wheel drivers. You know, before Dale Earnhardt's impressive last to first dash year a year ago, Two of the three previous events here have been won by open wheel stars. In 1994, sprint car ace Steve Kinzer went to victory lane. In a 1996, Al Unser Jr. led an open wheel sweep for the top three spots as Robbie Gordon and Scott Pruitt followed him across the finish line. Now, we may not be talking sweep here today, but we have three impressive open wheel drivers starting in the front two rows with Mark Dismore, Eddie Cheever, and Greg Ray. This one has all the ingredients to give us another first time Talladega winner. Talking about winners, let's go upstairs to Benny Parsons and Ray Evernham. These Pontiac Firebirds will be racing around 185 miles per hour. Very comfortable for these race car drivers, but Ray, question, is it too comfortable? Will these drivers be taking chances they normally wouldn't take? No, Benny, I don't think 185 miles an hour is too comfortable for an IROC car. It helps the guys that don't have a lot of super speedway drafting experience compete with our Winston Cup drivers. So it makes for a better race, and that's what IROC's supposed to be about, a good race. These three open wheel guys out there with nine NASCAR Winston Cup drivers, will they have a chance? Will the NASCAR Winston Cup drivers use them in the last lap, or will they abandon them and use the NASCAR Winston Cup drivers? Well, they're going to go with whatever they've got a better shot to win at. If an open-wheel driver's leading, there's a NASCAR guy that's going to go with them. And now we're just about ready for the command that will get this race underway here this afternoon. Gentlemen, again, your attention to the head of Pit Road for the most famous words in racing. My pleasure to introduce from Bacchus True Value in Ruston, Louisiana, Jody Backus. Jody, the mic's yours. True value, IROC drivers, start your engines. And now with the engines fired, let's take a look at today's starting lineup. In the front row, two from the Indy Racing Northern Light Series. Mark Dismore, third in points with one win in the series, and Eddie Cheever, the 1998 Indianapolis 500 winner. Row number two, Jeff Gordon from the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, a three-time champion, and Greg Ray, the defending champion of the Indy Racing Northern Light Series. Row number three, two from the Winston Cup Series, Dale Jarrett, the defending NASCAR Winston Cup champion, and Bobby Labonte, his second year in the International Race of Champion Series. Jarrett began 2000 with his third Daytona 500 victory. Labonte recorded his 13th career cup victory at Rockingham. In row number four from Winston Cup, Rusty Wallace, a former IROC champ, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., a two-time Bush Series champion. 
Rusty recorded his 50th career win in 2000 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Earnhardt's first cup victory came at Texas in his 12th start. In row number five, two from Winston Cup, Mark Martin, a four-time IROC champion, and Jeff Burton, who is in his third IROC season. Martin visited Victory Lane earlier this year at Martinsville, Virginia. Burton won at Las Vegas and also won the Noble $5 million bonus. And in row number six, two from Winston Cup, Tony Stewart, last year's Ray Bestis Rookie of the Year, and defending IROC champion Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt got his 75th career Winston Cup victory at Atlanta earlier this year, and he also won the IROC opener at Daytona, his fourth win in the last five IROC races. Five cars in the battle to the checkered flag for the win here at Daytona. They come off of corner number four. Here comes Stewart taking a look to the inside, but no, Dale Earnhardt wins. And with that win, he ties Al Unser Jr. for most wins in IROC competition 11. Dale Earnhardt, because of his victory at Daytona, will be starting last in today's field. 38 laps around this 2.6-mile trioval. Stay tuned for IROC. In the racing business, the right hardware at the right time can make the difference between winning and losing. With quality master mechanic tools, you're always a winner. Choose from a wide assortment of professional quality tools at great prices. Expect the best with Master Mechanic. Your true value is the official hardware store of NASCAR, IROC, and Homes Everywhere. Wagner brakes make any car feel high performance. Yep, they're Wagner brakes. Value, where help is just around the corner. Race number two of the 24th season of the True Value International Race of Champions set to go. We have six onboard cameras for you. Dale Earnhardt started back in 12 spot roof camera. And then we see Mark Martin looking out, looking out the back of his car, starting in the ninth position. Dale Jarrett inside his car as he looks forward from the third row. On the outside of the second row, Greg Ray from the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series. Jeff Gordon out the back bumper. And on the outside of the front row, Eddie Cheever. Quickly, let's take a look at the starting lineup once again before they get the green flag. It's Dismore and Cheever up front. Gordon and Ray in row two. Jared and Labonte in the third row. Then Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mark Martin and Jeff Burton back in the fifth row. And the last row, the top two finishers at Daytona, Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt. The pace car is off. jumps out into the lead. The pole sitter, Mark Dismore, didn't get a very good start. He's running back there in the three-wide situation. A little bit of contact between Mark Dismore and Greg Ray as they came off the corner, and quickly Dismore is losing positions. But and look, look who's coming up through the middle. It's Dale Jarrett. And Dale Earnhardt is right behind Jarrett. Starting in 12th spot, and this is probably a battle for the fifth or sixth spot coming off turn four, and he's pushing Jared off the corner. Off corner number four, they come. The start finish line way down toward turn number one, but Eddie Cheever right now has command. Look at Jared, however, up on the high side of the racetrack, trying to lead lap one. He does not give lap one to Eddie Cheever from the Indy Racing Northern Light Series. True value telemetry will show you the speed and the 
tachometer reading on these cars. And we see Rusty Wallace going by Jeff Gordon. He follows Cheever now, and he's got the red car of Mark Martin along with him. Up on top, we've got Dale Jarrett with Tony Stewart drafting behind him. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt, who came up to about fifth position, got a little bit hung out in the first and second turns, and he's at the back of the field once again. Dale was able to come up through there on the first lap because the IROC cars have a little bit more gear in them than a Winston Cup car. They accelerate a little bit faster. So he got up to speed probably faster than those guys, but when he got hung in the middle, lost the draft, and they sent him right back to the rear of the pad. Rusty Wallace now running in second position. That's Mark Martin in third as those three cars separate themselves a little bit from Jeff Burton, who's running back into four spot. Here's Gordon Stewart, Jarrett, and most of the others battling for the seventh and eighth and on back positions. Now up front, it's Rusty Wallace who takes the outside line and gets around Eddie Cheever. See Jeff Burton going, Tony Stewart. So all these stock car drivers are ganging up on the Jetty Cheever. And Dr. Jerry Punch has a comment from Pit Lane. Just before climbing into the car today, he sat in the IROC lounge and watched the videotape of last year's race. What he learned was that he made too many mistakes by getting out of line. He needed to stay in line and not get hung out in the middle, which is exactly what happened a moment ago. He said, I need to cover the inside and stay in line. Dale Earnhardt kept in the cutoff truck to me in the windshield. He was wanting me to stay in line, and silly me, I wouldn't listen. This year, I hope to be able to listen. Well, Jeff Burton has now taken the lead. Cheever told me I came down on the flight with him uh, from Indianapolis uh, last week. He said, I rock racing is as much defensive as offensive. You've got to drive with your rear view mirrors and see who's behind you and make your move as much as you watch in front of you and what you do to go around that person. Joe Gibbs teammates, Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte have now taken the lead. So Tony Stewart, who ran so well at Daytona, finished in second position, started in the last row, has worked his way up to the lead. And he's now going to get hung out as the bottom drafting line forms. And so Bobby Labonte will have the lead with Jeff Burton second off of turn number two. A rusty Wallace just dives to the inside. Looks like he's going by Jeff Burton along with help from Mark Martin. Greg Ray running there in fourth position from the Indy Racing Northern Light Series, the defending champion of that division. And Greg Ray slides up in line to fourth. Running speeds in excess of 183 miles an hour. Labonte's last lap was 183.238. Labonte is the leader of the race, followed by Wallace, Martin, Ray, and Burton. We'll be right back. Peace. Back at Talladega, where we're about to complete lap number eight, Rusty Wallace now takes the lead from Bobby Labonte. Wallace made the move coming off four through the trioval. He has Mark Martin is going to go to second. Here comes Greg Ray and Jeff Burton into fourth position. Then comes Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett. Poor Bobby Labonte just keeps going back and back. They all ganged up on the inside, left him no one to draft with. That's a pretty bad position to be in, Benny, when you're out there and you're leading and you don't do anything wrong. It's just that everybody decides that they're going to go on their own. On board with Greg Ray, who's running in the third position. And Jerry Punch has more on Greg Ray. Greg Ray was telling me before the race today, it helps if you know who you're racing with, because when you go out and practice, you sort of get an idea of what different drivers do on different racetracks. Said, but the problem is, you don't know who's in which car. And one of the IROC guys said, well, right there on the back bumper of the car, it tells the guy's name. And Greg said, yeah, but if I'm far enough back to see his name, then I'm too far back. <laughs> Greg Ray has only been racing since he was 25 years of age. He's 33 right now, but has accomplished a lot in his short racing career, including the championship in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series last year, winning three times. This is Mark Martin running in second place, riding on the back bumper 
And this Pontiac Firebird, a true value onboard camera. As you look back, looks back at Greg Ray. And Mark Martin has been so successful in the past few years in the true value IROC series. Got a glimpse of Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt, who are running in the middle of the pack, back in eighth and ninth position, trailing Cheever, Dismore, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's running 12th right now and seems to be losing the draft. It does look like an Earnhardt Jr. is in jeopardy. It looks like those other two cars hooked up together are driving away from him. And I think he is going to lose the draft. It's going to be 11 car race. And those two cars, they really need him back there to push him and try to get them to the front. Now here comes Jeff Gordon making a move to the inside and bringing Dale Jarrett right behind him or on board with Jarrett. Second line didn't form, though. They go through turns three and four, single file down low. And now a close move as Bobby Labonte went to the inside. Ben, you said those cars are comfortable. I guess so. <laughs> he just turned that car left coming off turn four. Oh, man, look how close they are coming down through the start-finish line area. On board with Dale Earnhardt, surrounded by speeding race cars. Earnhardt started last at 12th spot. He's been up to about fifth or sixth. And look, on the apron of the racetrack as Mark Martin just drives down, tries to take the lead away from Rusty Wallace. He's got Jeff Burton right behind him for some drafting help as they leave Wallace up on the high side of the racetrack. Ray, how are these guys are able just to turn the car off the corner as abruptly as they are? Well, Benny, they've worked very hard on the aerodynamics of that Firebird. The, the front has a lot of downforce, the rear has a lot of downforce, and out the back of that car, you see a little lip on the back of that spoiler, and with that big spoiler on there, that also helps those cars to drift. Look at the size of the spoiler on the back of those cars. Feels good, but also makes a big hole in the air. Three wide down through the tri-oval. Right in the middle is Dale Jarrett. Gordon and Labonte to either side of him. And Dale Earnhardt has now worked his way up to the third position. Stewart and Wallace so close you couldn't put a finger between them. But they're drafting. Oh, they're touching as they go down the back stretch. And now Rusty Wallace goes up top. How'd you like that? Tony Stewart just pushed Rusty <laughs> up on the outside. Said, okay, I think I'll get down on the inside and follow these guys and get a draft. Now that's a sneaky way of getting by. <laughs> So lap number 13 is going to be led by Mark Martin, then Burton, and Dale Earnhardt running third, followed by Tony Stewart. will make up this second race of the IROC Series 24. On top right now is Mark Martin, closely in pursuit, Jeff Burton, Dale Earnhardt, Tony Stewart, and Greg Ray. Through victory in the last Indy Racing event before the Indianapolis 500, the Vegas Indy 300, Saturday on ABC. Back at Talladega, IROC 24, race number two. Dale Jarrett gets a line down low and goes around Mark Martin and will take the lead coming down to complete lap number 15 and Earnhardt is second. And just a few laps ago, those guys were at the tail end of that pack. Unbelievable just how you can go from the back to the front as easy as you can. Now Mark Martin is in the middle and hung out a bit as he has a drafting line above him and below him. He's going to drop all the way back to the end of the 11 cars that are running together. Earnhardt Jr. is the only one not in the lead draft. Well, the Vegas Indy 300 can be seen live next Saturday on ABC Sports beginning at 3.30 Eastern time. It's the final tune-up before the Indianapolis 500, the third race of the year. Join us for the Vegas Indy 300 next Saturday. Oh, some contact. Man, guys, quit doing that. You're making me nervous up here. Did you see that? Eddie Cheever. Now running in fourth position, had some contact. 
It was with Greg Ray. Anyway, everybody survives. And Earnhardt looks for a way around. Dale Jarrett looked low. That wasn't good. Now he goes high. Not much drafting help up there. Now he'll get some, and he'll go for the lead. Did oh. you see Cheever on the bottom of the racetrack? <laughs> what a move that Eddie, Eddie Cheever made. That's why these guys have no spotters, because they'd be scared to death watching this. <laughs> Man. Well, they're two by two as they come down here. Who's going to lead lap number 17? It's going to be close, because Earnhardt has a good run up on top, but Cheever will lead it. As Jeff Gordon behind him, the dark blue car. Look at Jordan Gordon come up. And check out our telemetry, a true value of telemetry. Watch the speed as Cheever goes down the backstretch. 188, 189, up to 191 miles per hour. So 193. As they go in the corner, hit that bank, and they will start losing some of their miles per hour. And RPM goes with the miles per hour. And outside line, Earnhardt has now gone back to the fourth or fifth spot. Eddie Cheever continues to lead. He started second and finished eighth here at Talladega in the IROC race last year. Two by two, we have Earnhardt running alongside Jeff Burton at the middle of the field, but up front, the action is incredible. Jeff Gordon tries to find a way around Eddie Cheever, but they fall into single file formation on through the first four. Then back here, we have Earnhardt, Stewart, and Burton running in a threesome. And Dale Jarrett, who was leading the race just a few laps ago, is now back to about the ninth, 10th position. That's Mark Dismore back there in that yellow car, running alongside Greg Ray. I think Eddie Cheever up front is moving up about a half a lane in the middle of the corner, and I believe that Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace will take him to school here pretty quick if he, if he does that again. Now these 11 cars are running together, but Dr. Jerry Punch, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is out of the draft. What's wrong? Well, Bob, you just basically solved the, the problem there. He's out of the draft. The Yarrock officials watching Earnhardt Jr. cars as car come by, and they didn't hear any miss in the engine. It sounds pretty good. In fact, he's running laps at 5370, which is about what the Yarrock cars could run here at Talladega. Unfortunately, he got shuffled out of the draft. He doesn't have a drafting partner. No one helping push the air, and he's lost the lead 11. And that's his big problem right now. So he's just struggling along, but all the other 11 competitors are running pretty close together. Cheever will lead yet another lap. I think that Jeff Gordon, we saw him fall back three or four car lengths. I think he was laying back to try to get a run on Cheever. Now, Penny, when you roll back to the car behind you, that will push you up. You've got a little vacuum in front of you, give you a run to get by. I believe, uh, as I said, they're, they're looking at taking a run on Adam off of one of the corners here. Well, there are the top five. It is Cheever, Gordon, Wallace, Labonte, and Mark Martin. And again, Gordon comes right up on the rear spoiler of Eddie Cheever. And as heart-stopping as this is, I'm sure that Cheever is going to say whether he wins or loses at the end of this race. That's as much fun as I've had in a long time. <laughs> You're right, Bob. <laughs> From the Indy Racing Northern Light Series, Eddie Cheever leads with 20 laps completed here at Talladega Super Speedway. Gordon is second, then Wallace, Labonte, and Martin. On Monday, it was an eternity away. By Thursday, you could almost taste it. The weekend, filled with possibilities and, oh yeah, projects. Nobody knows where you'd rather be more than true value. We get you in and out fast with just what you need. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True value. Help is just around the corner. That's great. <laughs> Hold on a sec. What are you doing? Okay. Oh, my God. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ABC next Sunday.
What's that, Coke? Something better. Heroin. It's TV Guide's highest rated movie of the week. I'm not gonna hurt you, Max. Trapped in a Purple Haze, ABC Monday. Today's auto race brought to you by Fantastic Sam's. Gotta be the hair. Thinking about painting your car? Stop thinking, do it. Mako's still offering the Ambassador Paint Service for only $199, the best economy paint service in America. For a great finish and a beautiful deal, call 1-888-MAKO-USA. On Honda Valkyries and Goldwings. Low payments on Valkyrie, Shadows, and Magnas. With the Honda Card. Incredible deals on some incredible Hondas. So hurry to your Honda dealer during the road to savings. Ride the road to savings now at Aurora Honda, Fay Myers Motorcycle World, and XL Motorcycles. Standing up and speaking out on your concerns can get things done. That's our opinion. What's yours? Hey, you're the guy in the spy movies. <laughs> no, I'm not an actor. Fast cars and beautiful women. Ooh, and you are the master of disguises. The little moustache. The hunchback. <laughs> and what's with that evil bad guy and his albino pet monkey? <laughs> Is that thing? Love the helicopter pen. Looking extra cool. Gotta be the hair. Gotta be that expensive salon look from Fantastic Sam's. Hey, if you need a sidekick, I'm ready. Fantastic Sam's. Gotta be the hair. I'm Steve Godsagan. Don't miss 7 News at 5 today. Back at Talladega, we're on lap number 23. Eddie Cheever down there in the aqua car had the lead, but he's got a whole bunch of NASCAR Winston Cup drivers now ahead of him, down below him, and here they come. That's going to be Rusty Wallace taking advantage, and Mark Martin dropping in behind him as they come off corner number four. Jeff Gordon in third position, down on the bottom side of the racetrack, and then Bobby Labonte. And Dale Earnhardt is fifth. And Dale Jarrett, all these guys are just hooking up with the stock car guys trying to get up front. Cheever now hung out on the high side of the racetrack, and so it goes. All right, now Mark Martin, oh, how close he was when he shot to the inside of the racetrack, but he gets good drafting help from Griff Jeff Gordon, and Mark Martin is going to go to the lead. That rant looks like the leading is the last thing you want to do. Well, as good as those cars are drafting, it just seems like the, the guys behind you can pull out a line anytime they want to and go by you. We've seen cars going from the back to the front and front to the back several times already. Mark Martin has never won here at Talladega. He's finished third on four different occasions. He was the champion, however, of the IROC series in 1990, 96, 97, and 98. I just missed it by what? One point, I think, last year mm -hmm. of winning the IROC championship. Talking about Mark Martin, the leader. All came down to the final race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and that's the same situation in this year of 2000. That's where we will wrap up the IROC series, the week of the Brickyard 400. Got Greg Ray, Eddie Cheever, a couple competitors in the Indy Racing Northern Lights series back side by side, and guys, Got to get hooked up. Don't run side by side. There we go. Cheever decides to drop in behind Ray, and now perhaps they can draft up to the car right ahead of them. But those three guys stay in line. The other guys in front of them are going to get greedy and go side by side. They can catch back up if they stay in line. As soon as those other guys split side by side.
tonight at 7.30. NHL Stanley Cup Playoff Conference quarterfinals game number three will feature the Philadelphia Flyers against the Buffalo Sabres. The Flyers lead the series 2 to nothing. ESPN and ABC are the exclusive networks for all Stanley Cup action. Coming down to complete lap number 26 of 38. And Mark Martin is in command with Jeff Gordon right behind him, followed by Bobby Labonte and then Dale Earnhardt. Dale Jarrett right behind Earnhardt. This is only Bobby Labonte's second year in the IROC series. He substituted one race for Robbie Gordon back in 97. And then when Allinger Jr. dropped out of the series last year because of his daughter Cody's illness, Bobby Labonte took over and is in the series once again this year. And Labonte is deciding it's time to make a move, and he's got Earnhardt with him. They move up a spot, and Dale Jarrett on the low side in the white car gets a good run. And they've put Jeff up in the high groove with no draft and help. He's going to go back until those other guys, those last three cars, I believe, have caught up a little bit. Maybe they can push him ahead when they get there. And Dale Jarrett was leading the race 10 laps ago. He went all the way back in. Here's a battle for the lead on the outside. Bobby Labonte, Earnhardt goes with him. Dale Jarrett goes with him. And Mark is now the sitting duck. Labonte got credit for leading that lap. They paid bonus points to the three drivers who lead the most laps. Boy, it's been a really clean race. Now we're going to see three wide. That is Jeff Burton down there in that oh. green car, and he and Jarrett make contact down the back stretch. <laughs> man, oh, man. But see now Greg Ray and Eddie Cheever, who were lagging behind, got in line, and now they're right up in the mix again. These cars are unbelievably stable. Those two guys should have crashed with that contact they did on had on the back stretch. Well, Jason Nori told me that those cars are set exactly the same way as they were at Daytona, and he said, why mess with a good thing? And they've got a good thing there. They sure do. It's great to see this level of competition with everybody staying right together, the exception Dale Earnhardt Jr., who got out of the draft and just can't catch up. We have less than 10 laps to go, and it's anybody's race right now among 11. But at the moment, it's Bobby Labonte leading race number two, IROC 24 at Talladega Super Speedway. And Blanchard's car is handling great as he takes the lead. Incredible. Boog chassis parts make any car feel high performance. So choose the chassis parts that drive NASCAR champions to victory. Moog, now with M2 technology. They're calling you. The places you want to be. The things you want to do. But you're not going to get there until you finish this stuff. That's why there's true value. We get you in and out fast with just what you need for the job. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True value. Help is just around the corner. Anymore. Of course we laugh. Oh, Jack. Do you remember the time at Wendy's we had those Monterey Ranch chicken sandwiches? Those are good. <laughs> Never seen you so happy. That was over a year ago. <laughs> well, get happy again because Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich is back with a whole breast fillet, Monterey Jack, and ranch dressing with bacon. You can't help but feel good. The love is back. Wendy's Monterey Ranch. My lawn is really by pride and joy. I know it's weed free, I know it's dandelion free. I do it by using Scott's Turf Builder Plus Two. The light granule sticks to that wet leaf much easier than a heavy granule, which would fall off. It doesn't stick, it just doesn't work. I think it's the greatest product ever made. Everyone here is a race fan, and real fans know racing. They also know authentic racing apparel. Chase Authentics is the authentic trackside apparel of NASCAR. Authentic t-shirts, caps, cotton and denim shirts, golf shirts, and jackets. Authentic racing apparel you'll find on hot drivers. In leading department stores, NASCAR specialty shops, and trackside. Chase Authentic. I've met many people at crossroads in their lives. 
Welcome back to the True Value IROC race here at Talladega. Three of these drivers will be in action next Saturday in the Vegas Indy 300. Live coverage on ABC Sports at 3.30 next Saturday afternoon. The final tune-up before the Indy 500. ABC's Jack Aru covers all the happenings at the track at abcsports.com, a part of Go Network. All right, they're on lap number 31, and Bobby Labonte leads five cars, five-car draft down the backstretch. Mark Dismore has also lost the draft. So now it comes a 10-car race, and really these five have separated themselves a little bit. And uh, Jerry has a comment on Mark Dismore, who's running out of the draft. Apparently, Mark may be having a mechanical problem. The spotters are reporting that they've seen a little puff of smoke out of the back of his car. Uh, and as he came by a moment ago, the rear bumper guard was turning dark, indicating he may have some oil or some fluid or something that's gotten on that bumper guard. So that may be the reason Dismore has lost the lead draft. Certainly an engine problem. He's trying to try to milk this to be able to finish here at Talladega. I don't know if Bobby Labonte has ever been in this situation at Daytona Talladega. One of the super speedways leading the race with a few laps to go. And in his mirror, Dale Earnhardt. I'm not sure he wants to be in this situation. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking because, folks, this guy in second spot in this tan colored car. We're riding on board with him right now. It just seems like he's unbelievable on his last few laps at Daytona and Talladega. And I guarantee you all Bobby's seen in the mirror is Earnhardt smiling. <laughs> is tied in record number of wins in the IROC series with Allenser Jr. But Earnhardt won at Daytona. He tied. He could become the all-time winningest driver with a victory here this afternoon. I think Earnhardt gave a hand signal that time to the car. Martin Martin behind him. Coming through the trouble. I thought I saw his hand go up. Now, what kind of signal he would be giving? Maybe he's telling with two laps to go or two more laps or... I think Benny, he might have been trying to get all those guys to stay in line. They've broken up into a couple little packs, and they might want to settle it between those first five cars. So he's maybe trying to keep everybody to get in line till they get inside of two to go. Four stock car guys, along with Greg Ray in the lead draft, consisting of five cars. Greg Ray in that orange car, running back there in the fifth position. Riding along with Mark Martin now, who's third. That's Earnhardt up ahead. Jeff Gordon is fourth in the blue car. Jeff Burton and Tony Stewart not too far behind this group and look, appear to be gaining on them a little bit. Less than five to go at Talladega in the second race of the IROC series here in the year 2000. We've got a race at Michigan and Indianapolis yet to come this year. You saw Jeff Gordon roll back a little bit to Greg Ray and then try and get a run on Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon back in fourth spot. We're riding on board with him now as he sees Martin Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte. Well, we're on tape, so we're going to take a break, but you will not miss a thing. We'll be back with more action from Talladega Super Speedway in just a moment. Thirty-four laps completed, 38 make up this race, and there they are, the top seven, the top five running close together. That's Labonte, Bobby Labonte out front, Earnhardt, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, and Greg Ray, the top five, and closing up, Jeff Burton and Tony Stewart. We're on board with Greg Ray now, running at the back of this five-car draft. And we wonder about just how worried that Bobby Labonte is about Dale Earnhardt. Just think Greg Ray he says, man, I'm in the middle of six of the best stock car drivers in the world. I need to be paying attention. And here comes Mark Dismore. Jerry indicated there may be a mechanical problem with that car, and Mark has decided to come in and get it checked out. So Mark Dismore will probably start on the pole again for the race at Michigan. They start in the reverse order of where they finished the previous event. I think Jeff Gordon and Greg Rape got to make a decision. Do they have enough help or weight till the guys in front of them split and make a run at them or roll back to those other two guys and make it four versus three so they can get a run at the leaders? This is third place Mark Martin as he trails Earnhardt and Labonte through the third and fourth corners. 
coming down to complete lap number 36. Just two to go. When will they start making the moves? I don't think Earnhardt wants to do it too quickly. Because if he does, then he's going to leave himself open for someone else to make the move on him. Oh. Mark Martin back in third place as he tries his best to close up on Dale Earnhardt and try to figure out what Earnhardt's going to do so he can help him get by Bobby Labonte and then get by Earnhardt. Well, they're going to have to make up their mind and do something because if Jeff Burton and Tony Stewart get there, they're going to have to do something. Dale Earnhardt won his very first IROC race here in 1990. Also won in 95 and 99. Bobby Labonte has never won a True Value International Race of Champion. Here comes the group down to the white flag. One more lap to go, and they begin to make moves now. And Earnhardt may be getting hung out on the bottom of the racetrack. One lap to go with Labonte still in the lead. And now Mark Martin is second. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable that Earnhardt was not the guy that Martin abandoned Earnhardt and went to the outside. They get spread out just a little bit as they go down the back stretch, but Dale Earnhardt will have some drafting help from Jeff Burton. Now he decides to go to the middle of the racetrack. And some contact between Burton and Greg Ray. Here they come off the fourth corner. Earnhardt is back there in the fourth position. They come down through the trioval, and Bobby Labonte is looking at the checkered flag. Is he going to make it? Yes, Bobby Labonte wins number two in the 24th year of the series. Wow. How about that? I don't think Earnhardt was expecting Mark Martin to go to the outside and leave him hung on the bottom of the racetrack. Well, his previous best finish was second in his first race last year at Daytona. He finished 10th here at Talladega last year, but in 2000, Bobby Labonte wins his first IROC race, and it comes at Talladega. The International Race of Champions on ABC Sports, brought to you by True Value, where help is just around the corner. ABC Sports is online at abcsports.com, part of Go Network. Well, the race here at Talladega is completed. We go to victory lane. Bobby Labonte emerges as the winner. And True Value IROC 24, round two is history at the world's fastest stock car facility. And a former pole sitter and winner here at Talladega goes to victory lane. Bobby, congratulations on IROC win number one. Man, hey, thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. Uh, I tell you what, uh, yeah, I thank True Value, Goodyear, and uh, Jay Signori and all the IROC guys put together some great race cars out there. I didn't know if I could hold them off. I didn't really want to be in that play in that position, but I ended up, I put myself there when I passed. I think it was Mark or Jeff, and I said, well, Earnhardt's behind me and Mark's behind him, so, man, I don't know. I could get shuffled back to about eighth or ninth here pretty quick, but uh, they, just got, they got to racing a little bit back there. I saw a couple of cars get caught up, so they started racing a little bit and just had to use it as wide, this old Pontiac, as wide as it could be at the back. You know, wider is a little bit better sometimes. <laughs> Knowing Earnhardt's history here at this track at Daytona, what were your thoughts? What were you going to try to do if you didn't have anybody like Mark Martin to help you? Well, I mean, uh, with Earnhardt back there, I I mean, the past, the last 10 laps was just, I was like, well, I know he's going to do something, but I saw him back there. He, I knew he was going to save single file with that one to go. And uh, then the other guys got called back up. I just felt like, uh, you know, hopefully the other guys will get to racing and uh, won't give him the position to get to me. And it turned out that way. A lot of times it doesn't, but this time it did. Had to make you feel pretty good, though, when you saw Mark Martin hang him out to dry and come up with you, knowing that you had Mark to try to beat and not Earnhardt, who uh, he seems to be able to see the draft. Yeah, I know it. And, uh, you know, Mark didn't have much help behind him, so I felt pretty comfortable that I was going to be able to just race him to the checker flag. It was close there at the end, but, uh, you know, without some help behind him, he didn't have really good run. And we were out there kind of single file by ourselves. Some cars cut to him, and they they did catch me there at the start finish line, but I was hoping that that start finish line wouldn't be no further down than that. So anyway, worked out good. I just want to say hi to, to Cody Unser. Uh, took over Al's ride here last year on the IROC cars, and uh, we're thinking about her and her transverse myelitis uh, program she's got going. And uh, you know, this this one's for her. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Bobby Labonte, two faces and two different drivers in victory lane for True Value IROC 24. Labonte wins it at Talladega. 
and they have started a Cody's First Step Foundation for transverse myelitis, and Bobby Labonte donated all of his winnings from IROC last year, $60,000 to start that foundation. Finished second in the Winston Cup points last year. Already has a win in NASCAR Winston Cup competition here in 2000 at Rockingham, and now he becomes a winner in the IROC series, beating Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt. Surprised to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in 11th spot. Evidently, his car just would not get up to speed or something was wrong because we expect him up in with that group in front mixing up with them. Greg Ray, the highest finishing of the open wheel contention. Here are the point standings as we head to the third race at Michigan. Earnhardt will lead them. Bobby Labonte is just six points behind. Jeff Burton and Mark Martin are now tied for the third position with Tony Stewart in the fifth position. That third race at Michigan will be on Saturday, June the 10th on ESPN. And then the final race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Saturday, August the 5th on ABC Sports. Thanks for joining us here at Talladega Super Speedway as Bobby Labonte has won his very first race in the International Race of Champions Series.